Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about all the wonderful things that are going on in and around the city of Missoula. Um, I got a guest here from Missoula Agent Services. It's Stephanie uh, Filkins, and she is the Meals on Wheels uh, coordinator at uh, Missoula Agent Services. So I'll have her on in a bit. Um, first and foremost, I want to show you get uh, guys a little bit of the weather that's happening. It's been fairly warm outside. It hasn't been so bad. Um, but if you want to take a quick look, you just go to uh, the National weather services if I can bring that up real quick and it is currently 30 degrees outside your high is gonna be 45 uh, it kind of rained uh, this week Tuesday we had some really interesting downpours but it didn't freeze overnight and we can expect some of those highs on Saturday to be as high as 50 degree temperatures but you can expect a lot of that snow to be coming in as soon after we get nice and dipped up high uh, we our heads above the water and are it's gonna go right back down to some more uh, couple uh some amount of snow that's definitely going to be happening around here all right let's kick off with some news i don't want to keep my guests waiting too long but let's talk about what's kind of happening within the uh, state of montana before we get into uh, the whole trump thing and then of course the whole coronavirus that has hit the united states i'll talk a little bit more about that uh 11 months from now steve bullock will no longer be governor of the state of montana to which he plans to be more aggressive uh policies and to uh sure sure uh to keep a lot of those policies in place. He wants to, uh, many Montana Dems are hoping Steve uh, will take on Danes, uh, well, was hoping that uh, Bullock will take on Danes this November because uh, Steve Danes is up for re-election in the Senate. But uh, Steve Bullock has uh, shown a little uh, interest in becoming a senator. Uh, he ran as a presidential bid, which started late. And, of course, he got a bump from Hollywood folks, uh, California, from Jeff Burgess and Jane Fonda. But that wasn't quite enough for him to continue on. So he withdrew his bid a couple months later. Uh, of course, since 2005, Montana has seen Democratic governors from Brian Schweitzer to Bullock, and uh, governors, since they only have a two-term limit, can uh, go up to eight years in uh, being governor of the state. Uh, thus far, the biggest candidates among the GOP perspectives is uh, Montana State Attorney Tim Fox, who has opposed Bullock on many things in the past. Uh, U.S. House Rep. Gianforte has uh, put his bid as in the governorship, as he will be not uh, seeking re-election for uh, U.S. Congress. Um, and also, a newcomer, uh, Senator, uh, Senator Al Oswalski of Kalispell, is the third man running. He assumed Montana State Senator in 2017, but he, of course, he served in the House from 2015 to 2017. Um, one of the things that I wanted to also mention as well is the Dems also are looking to uh, put some of their own people in there. Mike Cooney, who is the lieutenant governor under Steve Bullock will, uh, and former secretary of state of Montana, you probably see a lot more of them in the next couple of months. Um, and he's running. Uh, Casey Schreiner is the minority leader of the Montana House of Representatives. She's throwing her hat into the ring. Uh, the primary will be uh, voted on in sometime in this summer. So you want to check for your belts for the primary. Uh, and then, of course, there's Whitney Williams, businesswoman and daughter of form, former U.S. Representative Pat Williams, is also putting her hat into the ring. All right, here's the news. Trump, it's the last day of the trial, and this one will be uh, four hours of debate on whether to subpoena witnesses, um, uh, more subpoenas, a vote on witnesses and documents on a vote on other motions. If a vote fails, the Senate could move to a, the acquittal vote. So th what this basically means is that the majority uh, GOPs will finish the trial once and for all, and then they'll go to a vote, which is required two-thirds votes to convict the president. But a lot of people and a lot of uh, senators have said that they're going to be voting on party lines. Uh, of course, yesterday was quite a day as both sides submitted questions to various levels during the impeachment trial. The Senate, acting as the jury, wrote a series of questions, and the answer portion followed up with the U.S. Chief Justice John Roberts presiding over the trial. And of course, he refused to... Uh, uh, ask a question by Senator Rand Paul because he na uh, cause it named the whistleblower. Uh, thus far, the trial will be decided uh, today whether or not to call additional witnesses, and a major decision will be made today in this historic event of a third president who has been uh, impeached. And this, this whole trial is to determine whether or not he's going to be convicted or acquitted.
Um, international news, coronavirus, co uh, coronavirus is in Chicago. As China shuts down many public venues on the heels of the Lunar New Year is part of China's biggest migration tradition where people of all cities travel home to be with their families was uh, called off. Um, the CDC announced Thursday a woman who has confirmed to be infected with the coronavirus in Chicago, Illinois, transmitted it to her husband. Uh, she was um, in Wuhan, uh, which seems to be uh, the city that is shut down to... Uh, uh, since Thursday, and and she arrived um, January 13th feeling sick and is the first U.S. case of the coronavirus, which was confirmed earlier last week. In this, And there was also another one that was confirmed in the state of Washington. Uh, officials say they would be able to detect the virus early in the patient, um, who was a man in his 30s in Washington. Sorry, I'm talking all over the place. Uh, Chinese officials reported Thursday that the virus has killed 170 people and sickened more than 7,000 in mainland China. So far, the state of China has been unclear, with many conflicting information as China has been tight with information and how they're handling citizens who have contracted coronavirus. CDC says that you should go about your day and use recommended germ spreading precautions. Um, wash your hands, avoid touching the face, and quarantine yourself. If you get sick in general, um, go visit the doctor, do that kind of, uh, do all of the things you normally do. Um, and that's the, what the CDC is saying. So those are some of the things that are happening in and around the world today. Um, uh, there's always so much going on here, so uh, we can wait and see what happens with the uh, Trump impeachment trial and, uh, with, uh, and this uh, growing threat of coronavirus. All right, so without further ado, here is an art clip. This is going to be, uh, this is our installation, which will be wrapping up today at the Zootown Arts Community Center. So you guys can check it out till the end of today, Friday, the January 21st. And then when I come back, I'm going to have Stephanie uh, 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 Filkins here to talk about <laughs> Meals on Wheels. So stay with me. But I'm back here with uh, St uh, Stephanie uh, Filkins, and she is the volunteer coordinator with Missoula Aging Services' um, Meals on Wheels program. And you've been doing this since July. Um, it's great. And so, of course, you know, Missoula Aging Services, for those of you who don't know, it uh, promotes the dignity, independence, and health of aging adults and those who care for them. <laughs> Good? Almost. It's independence, dignity, and health. Right. <laughs> we always say, I dig health. I dig health. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway. Um, Thanks for having me here. Yeah. And One of the things is that you're really pushing to get some more volunteers, some more drivers. Uh, meals on Wheels program is a great program that provides meals for people who are homebound. Yeah, definitely. Um, we always are looking for new drivers and people that want to get involved and kind of share our mission with our clients and get those nutritious meals out to people who are homebound and not able to um, maybe go to the store and get a meal for themselves. So um, a little bit about the Meals on Wheels program and how we operate is that there's on average about 250 clients per day that we serve um, Monday through Friday, of course. And then those clients are spread amongst 18 different routes. Um, so we have routes that cover the University District and Missoula proper all the way out to Frenchtown. Um, we have 
a route that a couple of days a week goes down to Lolo. Yeah, you have a couple so. of routes that go further distance. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you know, there's uh, there's two different avenues to the Meals on Wheels program. Is mm -hmm. the people who are driving, and then, of course, people who want to take a part, be a part of getting meals from the Meals on Wheels program. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if I were to call, um, what number would I call, and how would I get in contact with the agent services? Yeah, um, so if you're interested in volunteering, there are a couple different avenues. You can go to our website, which is uh, missoulaagingservices.org, and we have a whole section on volunteering opportunities there. And if you want to call, um, the number is 728-7682. Nice. Yeah. So I call you up and be like, hey, I'm looking to become a driver. What, do I, what, what, what are some of the processes that I need to go through? Yeah, so we usually go through the initial application process, so you'll fill out some information about maybe why you want to volunteer, what programs you might be interested in helping out with. Um, once we get that information from you, we do an interview, and then if you say that you're specifically interested in Meals on Wheels, then we put you through a ride-along where you actually get to come in before committing to volunteering necessarily and kind of test the water, see if it's something that you think you want to do. You get to ride with one of our seasoned veteran Meals on Wheels nice. volunteers and get to know exactly how the process works and they are always really happy to show the ropes to new volunteers. And how important is that uh, personal contact with the people who are receiving the meals? Um, it's really important. Sometimes our clients you never know, the driver might be the only other human that they encounter throughout yeah. the day. So um, it is, it's got a lot of community behind it and just helping your, your clients and getting, giving them some socialization that they might desperately be longing for. Yeah. So, yeah. And of course, you know, like there are different types of uh, drivers. There's the designated drivers that are for particular days of the week. Mm -hmm. And then of course you have floaters, which are the true heroes of the Missoula, yeah. uh, Meals on Wheels program. So are just like, oh, this person can't do it. They're, they're too busy. And then it's like, I'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. We have our drivers that have more permanent schedules. Maybe they do uh, once a week, twice a week, um, once a month. It's really pretty flexible if you decide you want to have a set schedule. And it's also really flexible if you decide you want to be a sub and just fill in where the need is as we go nice. month to month. So how are you feeling about the this year's uh, volunteers? Like, like, do you think you have enough? You always can use more. What do you think? I Right now, I feel pretty good about where we're sitting. Like you said, we can always use more. It's always nice to have a good team of subs even just to, in the event that we have snowbirds that flee to go south for the winter or someone calls in kind of last minute. Um, so we're, our numbers are pretty good, but yeah, it's always nice to have kind of that group to pull from. Nice. Yeah. So once again, if you want to learn more information about the Missoula and Wheels programs or many other volunteer opportunities, you go to MissoulaAsianServices.org. You can also call them at... At 728-7682 um, or stop into our office at 337 Stevens Avenue. We're just about a block south of the Orange Street Food Farm. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Scott. All right, we'll be right back right after this. <laughs> Naked in a garden. Is awareness is A. 
Perception is P, and connection is C. Awareness, perception, connection. I think those are the building blocks to creating an initiative or a collaboration that allows those of you that are dealing with the potential of our society at a point where they're making decisions with those of us who provide opportunity to maximize that potential. We have to think that way in order for this to become something that works. To me, awareness means what we're doing right now. It's the first part. It's letting you know that there are jobs that are not the bottom line. They aren't the beginning point. They can become careers without college education, number one. Well, in the vein of those gritty reboots that are out there, here's a gritty re reboot of the pre-critic by absolutely changing maybe just a little thing, but not really changing the whole concept of pre-critic. Let's start. Uh, kicking things off is Gretel and Hansel. Not to be confused with Hansel and Gretel, uh, or Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters, or uh, Mother Goose's... Uh, Hansel and Gretel, or uh, Brothers Grimm, Hansel and You'll get the point. The whole point of this movie is that things happen. Uh, these two kids, they're in a forest. They get lost. Uh, but, of course, this is the one where they you know, drop the breadcrumbs so they can find their way home, blah, blah, blah. But that actually doesn't seem to matter in the end because they meet up with a witch. And the witch is like, hey, I'm a witch. And they're like, oh, no, you're a witch. And the witch is like, I'm going to eat you. I was like, why? It's like, you're eating my house. No, wait, that, that doesn't justify for you eating us. We weren't eating you. An eye for an eye, that kind of thing. It's like, well, I'm hungry. I'm going to eat you. And so that's kind of like the concept of this movie. Of course, I should refer to my notes. I'm trying to be uh, going off the grid. But anyways, um, uh, the witch wants to eat some... Uh, so anyways, the original story is that the witch has a really, really nice gingerbread candy house, beautiful thing that these kids find. But in this movie, since it's a little grittier, they're just going to make it more like a haunted house thing, and then of course haunted house shenanigans happen in a quasi-horror film. Hey, it's a horror film in January. It's obviously not going to do that great. So, basically... Uh, the concept of this movie is that um, in the original story is that the woodsman who is the deus ex machina of all the stories um, saves the day um, as the kids mostly Gretel because she's, she's, she's the BA in this movie. She's the one that pushes the witch in the oven, burns the, burns the witch as they escape and the huntsman is the one that finds them and is like, hey, uh, I'll take you home. You guys know where you live? And they're like, no, oh, okay. And this is one of, those, one, one of those many stories where the step mom is evil, blah, blah, blah. And then some movies where the stepmom is also the witch. I don't know. You decide. I've been w talking too long about this one. Let's move on to the next movie. It's called The Rhythm Section. This is basically uh, taken, but with uh, a lady who must fight the forces of the evil that killed the one she loves. So he wasn't taken, but he was taken in the sense that he'll never come back. Like, he died. Um, blah, blah, blah. Other action set pieces with taking the fight to them and getting over her... Uh, Getting, getting in over her head and then finding a way to survive. Explosions. There's a betrayal. She fights the one she thought she could trust or the one that helped her in the beginning, but he was only helping himself. Blah, blah, blah. Basically, this movie teaches us uh, do not go to Europe and the rhythm section will have also some kind of reference to um, uh, music just so they can justify the name of this movie. All right. Uh, the Assistant, a movie that's probably not coming out in theaters near you, but everything seems fine until it doesn't. This movie is about a, an assistant who is lucky at first, but then starts to notice that, hmm, there's an ever-growing plot of a thriller that is in the background. It's like, you know, you go to work and it's just like, I need to... I need to spice things up at the day of work, so uh, the corporation I work for is evil, blah, blah, blah. And then things happen, blah, blah, blah. And so basically this movie is um, the thrillers be like, this is not part of my job. And then you are an assistant. Please assistant the situation. Oh, geez. I mean, like, how am I going to get out of this in one piece? And then don't expect too much of this stretch of movie where things happen as not what you expect. But we've seen these movies too many times to be truly surprised. All right, so those are your movies that are coming out this uh, weekend uh, as well. But I made uh, dubbing stuff for you guys from the movie uh, The Big Bluff. <laughs> I hope you're ready uh -huh. for this. Oh, hey. 
I think it's absolutely prudent that you remember that she's not actually sick. Of course. Delusional people tend to be more dangerous. Mm, yes. But we have to play nice. Remember what happened last time? It was an absolute bloodbath. Well, how bad could it be, actually? Mm. You have no idea what you're in for. You have a woman who's been bedridden for a month. How bad can she be? Pamela's an absolute force of nature. Come on now. Don't embarrass me, okay? So I told him I'm Pamela Beauregard. I shall not be ignored. We're sorry. The number you have reached is... Well, hello there, Gigi and Steve. What are you doing here? We came here to give you some support. Ha! I don't think so, darling. I'm fine, thank you. I've been led to believe that you've been taking any calls lately. I'm just... Checking in to see if you're doing just fine, but it seems like you've been in bed for quite some- Please don't say time. I'm allergic to rhyming. Now doesn't that sound a little silly? After all, sound can't make you <laughs> go into anaphylactic shock or anything. It's a tickle of the ear. I find that hard to believe. Usually a prelude to death, but you wouldn't know, nor you'd care. Why don't you just leave and leave those fresh rhymes at the door? Okay, now Paula, you have to listen to reason. We're here That's because Paula we... Beauregard to you, sir. And don't you forget it. You know, I actually think you're sick. Oh, uh, Steve, no, don't, please, no, please. How long have you been in that bed anyways? One week? One month? Maybe even longer? We're worried about you. The world is passing you by and all you can do is do your hair in bed? That's not right. Well, um, well, maybe you're right. Um, I want to go out, but I'm sick. What do you have? If I knew that, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> How could you be so obtuse, standing there with your working legs? The sickness has caused you paralysis? Yeah, that's right. Now tell me, how does that actually happen? We'd all love to hear it. I'll be happy to. But before I tell anyone, Gigi, you my girl. I love you so much. You are the best. And I'm going to tell you exactly why the sickness has caused me to be paralysis. This, this, this. It was a winter's day. I was skiing in the Alps, and I realized that... Wait a minute, something weird's happening down there, and I have to go inside the lodge and, uh, well, you know, I might have pricked my finger on something. I just don't know how to explain it. But I'm sick, and I need all the help and support of my dear friend Gigi. And yes, maybe you too, Steve. You can help me. You can support me. Don't give me that look. What's going on in here? You guys mess with my lady? She's my princess. Please forgive them. They do not know of what they speak, after all. And what do they speak, honey? Please don't kill them on my behalf. I'm so innocent. Oh, God. Let's get out of here. Hey, guys. Welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about City Council. As City Council, um, there's a lot going on. And I, I wanted to uh, refer to uh, the meeting that happened on Monday, which was all about the approval of the 4th Street project. It was the last effort of many Missoulians to block the condemnation pro of the, uh, the project on 4th Street. Jordan Hess, he's the chair of Land Anderson Planning, had an opening statement to this project, and this is what he had to say about that. Uh, it is places like this... Um, or this, this project places density in an area that is near services, near parkland, near grocery stores, near employment centers, near transit, near our river trail system. The site is downtown. The site is on the hip strip. It's on our primary computer tra commuter trail network. It is on high frequency transit routes. It's a block away from the Higgins Street Bridge, which will be uh, rebuilt with very nice multimodal facilities for biking and walking in the coming years. I personally believe in creating density in the right places, and I believe that this is one of those right places. This idea is not a new idea. The idea of focusing inward and creating density uh, emerged in planning documents well over a decade ago um, and have been the, the forefront, the, the backbone really, of Missoula's planning documents since our Long Range Transportation Plan in 2008. Um, it is central to our growth policy, and this site is designated um, as city center within our growth policy. It helps us meet our housing policy by adding units at a mix of price points, which is really important. It is important to have, um, it, it is important to note that this is the first time that the city of Missoula has been able to condition affordability uh, as, a, as, an as an inclusionary policy. And 20% may not seem like a lot, but it is 
more than we've been able to do in the past. And- All right. So that was Jordan Hess. And one thing that they, they were going to, they also mentioned as well is that those historic three, uh, 100 year old brick buildings were going to get torn down one way or another. But with this leverage of the right of way passage, they might be able to save some of those buildings and relocate them as well. So they'll be moving forward on that. And you can always uh, keep up to date on seeing exactly where and how the developers are going to work with moving these buildings moving forward. Because that's the one thing that was definitely unclear about it. Just because they're saying they're going to do it, you never know. But that's just um, that's you know just speculation. Uh, the city members went into uh, the growing population and providing housing stock. That was that's a big thing in the city of Missoula's housing stock. Uh, you know, supply and demand is a huge deal that's happening in the city of Missoula. A lot of people want to move to the city of Missoula, and affordability is really bad. As in, everything's really expensive. Housing is going up and skyrocketing, and so with these high density places in the middle of town, um, they're able to uh, curve some of the stuff, and also with that twenty percent like he was talking about. Uh, Jordan Hess was saying that 20% was what the city raised the amount of affordable condos that they were going to be building on the 48-unit complex. Um, so the result is is that they'll want to create higher density so they can have lower prices. And most condos and those kind of things are used for starter homes for a lot of small families and not places for people. Um, so let's jump into the public comments. And a lot of the people in the public comments were, were completely just like, we get where you guys are coming from. We understand everything that you guys are doing, but you have to do more. And this is uh, one of the residents, and Andy Hillsell. This is what she had to say. I know that increasing housing stock is important, but that that's not automatically increasing affordable housing stock. So we do need to continue to make that a priority. The actual problem that we have here is that this entire project has this one unique piece, which is the vacation of the right-of-way, and it's the only time that anybody gets to have a voice like we've had at these meetings um, about a new development, and that's the problem, because this city does not have an inclusionary zoning policy um, that would allow, that would force, uh, require affordable housing to be a part of any market rate project. Um, that's what the problem is. And I, I just want council here to know that Missoulians and others are organizing to make that happen because I understand that in the growth policy and the housing policies that have been passed before, that conversation has um, been shut down very quickly uh, at that table, and that's not going to happen anymore. Missoulians are behind inclusionary zoning in this city. That's how we continue to have regular folks be able to afford to live here based on the wages that exist in this town. All right. So um, one of the things, uh, let me see. Let me just check my notes. All right. So uh, I had a really good I had a really good thought about this too, and I completely forgot it. Darn. All right. I'll just move over to another comment. This is Brian West. He's been very vocal about this. And um, he... He thinks the wording of this project is weak overall, and this is what he had to say. Is that when they stand up to speak in favor of affordable housing, you're hearing that as support for this project because your position is that this provides affordable housing. However, you had the opportunity to close the loophole that would make this provide zero affordable housing, and you did not, uh, you did not close that loophole. In the, the language of the motion as it appeared when it passed committee, it said that the project had to provide either 20% deed restriction or voucher availability for rental units. Not and, or, but or. At one point the language was and, or. They had to provide the for sale units be deed restricted and the rental units had to be voucher, had to have a voucher preference. Uh, you took- All right, so that was uh, Brian West. And they did actually refer to the, some of the wording in this in the final uh, reading of this, and they were able to add more uh, tighter uh, wording to this as well. But I th- I remember what I was trying to say. And inclusionary zoning, and one of the things that the city did do uh, with some of the development that has happened within the university district is that university overlay, which would have in- encompassed what they had with the 4th Street Ronan project. But they suspended that in favor of this uh, high density um, complex that was there. So a lot of people refer to the overlay as well. And wh- many of the people including Andy Hillsell, said that they, what they want to do is they want to create a city of Missoula where they have a little more 
teeth when it comes to people who are developing within the city and trying to uh, increase in affordability while at the same time trying to prevent uh, high luxury condos that it, this is basically creating. All right. So, um, and also during also during the meeting as well, uh, the the city of Missoula also went back and referenced the uh, the prices and with deed restriction, uh, courtesy of Brian West, who was just speaking in the last comment, uh, he said deed restriction was a little tighter and had more teeth when it comes to, um, you know, like if you have the first people who move into the condo and then they sell their condo, they can't sell it for an exorbitant amount of price because it has to remain affordable housing. And that's what deed restriction was in terms of moving forward with that. Of course, let's talk a little bit more about just kind of like how the city of Missoula is growing, and one of the biggest concerns is that the city of Missoula, according to uh, Suzette, is not growing with heart, and this is what she had to say. Um, I'm here because I live in this neighborhood. I live on South 2nd Street West, which is in a beloved area. I have bakeries around. I have uh, shops around. They're all in scale with the, na uh, the historic nature of the, of the community. They're small streets. We have to be careful as we pass each other, whether we're walking or biking or in cars. What I want to say is when I was at the 2020 Vision, uh, Missoula, which was what, eight, ten years ago, which I think is a rather myopic term because it was very unvisionary. It was saying that we take the place that we love and we destroy it. I'm sorry, but the University area, Slant Street neighborhood, Hip Strip, uh, Lower Rattlesnake are some of the highest density neighborhoods in Missoula. And they always come out as the most livable, walkable, sustainable, close to services, sometimes affordable um, neighborhoods in Missoula. And my heart mourns for the uh, north side, west side, because it is being gentrified and in not a very pretty way. It's All right, so that that was one of the things I wanted to leave off on with the city uh, meeting as well, is that with the high demand for house stock in the city of Missoula, a lot of things aren't taken into consideration, and, and that is to create an, I guess, a uh, a flexible character, a, a character that matches the city of Missoula, not just something that's manufactured, boxed houses, that kind of deal. And that's one of the things that a lot of citizens in Missoula are completely and utterly worried about. Those are the old historic buildings that they have on 3rd Street are such a nice um, sight to see. And they're beautiful brick homes and everything. It's been there for a while. But then, of course, they want to make sure that the building, the developers who are building on that site, build something that matches the aesthetic of downtown. And most of the downtown area is very brick, a lot of mixed mixed buildings, the different things. You have the Wilma, you have all that stuff. So as soon as you get on that side of the river, I mean, do you, do you want to have something that matches, you know, the buildings, the old buildings on, you know, the storefronts, you know, by Bridge Pizza, a couple of those old kind of buildings that really fit into some of the aesthetic of the neighborhood. So anyways, uh, dramatic growth has caused some concerns with the city. Um, of course, the majority of folks of the, Missoula, both within and outside these neighbors, have shown overwhelming oppositions to uh, this project, and as a result, the city did vote uh, for this proposed 48 unit condominium with a 20% affordable housing deed restricted area. This is this affordable after resale as well. So on the side of historic preservation, the developers to move the old brick building to a new location. And many of the uh, uh, concerns is that exactly where are they going to put them? So, uh, I want to kind of leave it off on that note. Uh, the city of Missoula is fighting a lot of uh, uphill battles when it comes to having that higher density. And part of a place called home, Missoula's growth policy, was to basically build density. And a lot of times, what a lot of uh, developers and a lot of people who have developed in larger cities have seen is that gentrification is basically what it is. Uh, so, anyways, I'm going to stop talking about this because it's a hot 
button topic, and we're going to see another one probably coming up real soon, and I'll be covering that more with your city council stuff. But let's talk a little bit about what's happening with committee meetings, because these are the uh, a lot of this is the backbone when it comes to uh, coming up uh, with uh, city council agenda items. Of course, during the committee poll, some of these items are ongoing. It revolves around acquisition of water company uh, legality, annexation, and max wave projects, which is uh, kind of like Brennan's wave. Um, Basically, committee of the whole, this is their cleanup phase. This is uh, something that they want to do updates on. They want to talk to organizations. They want to uh, create ties with organizations within the city of Missoula, which includes uh, University of Montana, uh, Missoula County Public Schools. And part of this uh, committee of the whole is to figure out joint meetings with uh, uh, the county. Missoula County and City of Missoula have done joint meetings and I've seen them do a lot more joint meetings nowadays with a lot of projects that are growing and also dealing with the uh, affordable housing and growing the house stock that Missoula desperately needs as more and more people are flooding to the city of Missoula. Why? I don't know. Sorry, that was a little too opinionated for my own good. All right, the city wants... Okay, so parks and conservation. They look into landscaping soils and, you know, blah, 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 water drainage. And I think this is pretty interesting in, the, in regards of parks and conservation because uh, with new parks they have growing pains. And uh, not to sound uh, tongue-in-cheek, but the grass grows differently on the other side of many of these different parks and that's what they're trying to figure out so landscaping is a big thing and they're looking to get some uh, money to help work with some of these new parks uh, silver park near the osprey or aka the paddleheads field um, and of course railroad near uh, the mall off johnson street those are the two of the some of the examples of the parks they want to work on some of the grass and because you know missoula soil is very interesting including because uh, <laughs> all right, I don't want to get into more of talking about Missoula soil, but it's very muddy and clay. And so the, a lot of the water just goes right down. So a lot of times the grass doesn't really take. All right, anyways, so that's what I talked about the community meetings. Um, this is a little more fun, but this is one thing that's happening next Tuesday. Um, Public Works will waive a downtown noise ordinance to accommodate the construction of the new uh, Hotel Marriott off Main Street. And this is... Uh, this is where they have the old Firestone building, so they're building another kind of hotel in that area. But first, they need the amount of time to pour cement for the sidewalk, and they want to do this between uh, 10 a.m. No, 10 p.m. and about 6 a.m. So they want to be able to waive the ordinance and be able to do this because this is what uh, Troy Monroe, the main uh, the man representing Dick Anderson Construction, um, is requesting specifically for this one. The uh, Dick Anderson construction is going to be doing uh, a big concrete pour. It's going to take them six hours to do this pour. Main Street is already only one lane because of construction, so they need to utilize the full road width during that time frame. So we agree with Dick Anderson that having Main Street closed during the daytime is not ideal. So they've opted to do this from 10 p.m. to 4 in the morning next Tuesday. All right, so part of this next Tuesday being February fourth um they want to be able to do this so they can um pour the cement all that stuff uh so they're they, they have one issue is that they can't close the street during business hours so the, which is why they can't do it like at a certain time in the morning from like six to like um uh, six to twelve or whatever or anything like that because uh it's a, a it's a montana law that prevents them from doing that which is why they need to do it overnight and then of course then they need a city which has the ordinance that you're not supposed to be a certain level of noise after 10 p.m. in general so that's kind of what they're talking about that so they want to kill two birds with one stone since the road is already closed uh, but they would just want to additionally close the whole road of Main Street right next to where uh, Union Hall is so be aware if you guys are traveling really early in the morning uh, avoid Main Street but then again, uh, you know, this is only going to be a Tuesday. Otherwise, they'd have to do it on a weekend. Okay, so mm -hmm, let's see. What else do I need to talk about? Uh, yeah, so this is basically the concrete base, sidewalk, all that stuff. And they say that the building is to be slated and to be completed of December. I think it's of this year, too. So it might be another year after that. It might take a while. It really just depends. Uh, so... That's kind of what's happening with the city uh, council meeting. I have some um, new art. I have a brand new art clip. I want to show you this. And this is something that will be happening in the city of Missoula. Uh, this is at the uh, 
University of Montana, Gallery of the Visual Arts, and the Social Science Building. So if you're looking at the, uh, if you're right in the center of the oval, which they call it, uh, and you're looking at Main Hall, look to your left and just follow the path all the way to that building. The building is like basically in your way, and it's the Social Science Building, and that's where you can find this art gallery where they're going to have all sorts of ceramics by a bunch of artists that are in the MFA program. So much art, and you guys can get arted. Um, <laughs> all right, I'll just stop. Uh, go to the Social Science Building Gallery of Visual Arts. Boom, let's talk about some um, uh, events that are happening within the city of Missoula. It's time for your events calendar. Let's see, do I have anything else for videos to show you? Heck no. I will go right to events. Uh, Project Community Connect is kicking off today. It's going to be happening pretty much all day from now until about 3 this afternoon. Um, we had a couple people from the community uh, borrow some of the audio equipment and gear here. They're going to be interviewing some of the folks through the pro uh, Project um, Community Connect, which was originally Project Homeless Connect. And so they want to connect community members and, you know, they have a uh, bus travel. So they're going to, and this is for people who, uh, it's a one-stop event that builds connection, community, and hope for people in need of the following services, mental, dental, eye care, housing services, IDs, birth certificates, veteran service, mental health, and addi addiction recovery, clothing, haircuts, pet food and vaccinations, public benefit assistance, hot food, and more. One of the things that are about the more is if uh, a person is um, has some legal issues, um, this is a great way where there's no judgment and they're able to help you with some of your legal issues moving forward as well. And that's part of this Community Connect. And it's going to be at the, uh, basically near the Missoula Indoor Sports Arena in the, let's see, where is it? It's the Valentine Center, It's it, which is basically the Missoula Indoor Sports Arena. You can't miss it. It's right there. It's the Valentine Center is kind of like if you go through the main entrance through the front, you'll see a huge room where there's going to be a lot of things happening as well. And it's going to be happening all day today. Um, speaking of things that always happen, Missoula Public Library hosts Tiny Tales and Story Time. It's at 10.30 a.m. pretty much most days of the public library, and it's to get kids engaged with reading. Yarns and Watercolor, it happens every Friday from 12 to 1. Um, yarns, if you want to knit your hat, scarf, maybe your pants and sweater, you can do that. Um, or you can just do some watercolor. Watercolor is fun. You do some art. Um, they are limited groups, so you have to RSVP um, to get in. Um, base art group. Base, uh, they're up on Alder Street near the hospital. Um, you can join for a free art workshop. It's every Friday from 1 to 3 p.m. at base. All ages, all abilities. Base is a community center run by Summit Independent Living. Everyone is welcome, and they offer supplies. Come as you are and bring a friend. And that kicks off at 1 p.m. this afternoon. Family, fr uh, family fun time at the YMCA. The YMCA is a fun indoor place for families. Um, it provides indoor all-weather play place where parents are welcome to join the fun, bounce houses, trampoline mats, and more. Uh, CASA, Light of Hope Gala. Uh, CASA of Missoula is the court-appointed special advocates, and they help with uh, raising money to uh, work with uh, 
children during their during difficult times through the legal battles with their parents. So their parents are going through some legal issues, and it really helps the kids along the way. Uh, this event includes dinner, silent op- and live auction, music, and more, and it's going to be at the University of Montana Ballroom starting at 6 p.m. Um, Montana History Club, Reconstructing Native American Influences on Bison. At the Missoula Public Library tonight at 7 p.m., uh, the Historic Club, Reconstructing, and uh, this is with uh, Josh uh, Milpa. Uh, much uh, has been written in relationships between Native Americans and Northern Plains and the bison population. And I also wanted to mention that MCT is going to be premiering uh, Leading Ladies at MCT. Actually, I spoke about it last Friday, so it's already been out. Part, part of the Leading Ladies is uh, a couple guys are, are hiding away from the law, and they go into a small town, and they dress up as women, and all hilarity ensues. It's a musical. It's great. And it's going to be happening Friday, um, and it's going to basically happen all weekend long at the Missoula Community Theater. All right, let's talk about some late-night events. If you guys are going to shake it down country-style, you can go to the Sunrise Saloon. Um, Jones End Band is going to be playing at the Union Club tonight. Uh, Neon Lights at Flying Squirrel. And the Motet is going to be some funk music happening at the Top Hat Lounge. And then, um, oh, it looks like it's ACDA at the University of Montana, which is a benefit concert. And I will double check that just to see some more information about this. It's the 17th annual concert featuring performances and choreographers who will be attending the Northwestern Region Conference of American College Dance Association, ACDA. And it's a dance thing. It's donations of five to $10 with more gratefully accepted. And it'll be happening um, January 31st and February 1st at 7.30 p.m. at the University of Montana. I believe it's at the open space, which I believe it's at the basement of the Par TV building. All right. So more events that are kicking off on your Saturday. Um, I'm just checking my time. I have way more. I have a lot of time. All right. So rightfully hers, pop-up e- exhibition and display. Missoula Public Library is hosting a new pop-up exhibit from the National Archives, rightfully hers, commemorating the 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment. If you don't know what that is, it's the women's right to vote. Women's suffrage is especially significant in Montana as it is one of 15 states that allowed women to vote before it was federally allowed in in the 19th Amendment in 1920. The pop-up display will be available for viewing through March 21st. So it kicks off tomorrow and it'll be happening for two solid months. Winter Storytown with Sneed B. Collard. Traveler's Rest State Park, every Saturday at 11 a.m., they do some kind of talk. And this one, they're going to be talking about warb- warblers and woodpeckers, a father's song, a father-son big year of birding, a Montana Book Award honor book, Uh, This humorous memoir not only shares the passion of birding and travel, but celebrates the special bond between parents and their kids. And this is going to be featured with Sneed B. Collard talking about it. Of course, uh, it wouldn't be complete without a reading of War of the Worlds. What? Yes, War of the Worlds will be uh, doing a live reading at the University of Montana. It's the uh, 1938 radio show based on Howard E. Cook, um, or, or Howard E. Cook, excuse me, uh, based on the novel by H.G. Wells, and it's going to be at the University of Montana Montana Theater, um, broadcast from New York's Mercury Theater in 1938. This famous radio play based on the novel by H.G. Wells had many terrified listeners. Orson Welles really delivered it. Um, of an actual unveiling invasion of the Earth was taking place, part radio, part play, part theatrical experience. This reimagining of the classic piece uh, is directed by Caitlin O'Connell, and that's happening at 7.30 p.m. most nights, uh, I think this might be the last weekend to do it. Uh, of course, it is Saturday, and as every Saturday, MCAT does our Saturday drop-ins from 1 to 5 p.m. If you are interested um, in having your kids come down here and make some movies, make some videos, uh, make some stop animation, it is a great opportunity for them to kind of kind of envelop around a lot of creative kids. And at this point, we have cultivated quite a collection of children that have been coming here a lot of different Saturdays. And if you're a new kid, it's always good because they always have a role for you. Missouri Museum. This is their big event auction art show because it's $100 for members. It's $150 for non-members. If you want a table for 10, it's $1,000 to get a table for this art auction at the University of Montana UC Ballroom, and it kicks off at 5 p.m. It's started their benefit auction. Um, Their auction officially starts, I believe, at 7 p.m. They'll have some silent auction, but they're also going to have the hybrid coming out at 200, 500, and all that stuff. It's going to be great. I'm going to do that when I grow up. Uh, the uh, be the art, the auction caller guy. I'm totally going to do that. All right. So, so 
once again. Uh, UC Ballroom, kicking things off at 5 p.m., the Missouri Art Museum. It's a benefit art show. To, money goes to the Missouri Art Museum. All right, so speaking of art, we have uh, the Missoula Symphony Orchestra and, Cor- and, and Corel, Corel, sorry about that. It's a big year, and they've seen in more than a decade, after cons- uh, careful consideration of more than 100 talented candidates, they have narrowed the field. Five exceptional conductors from across the globe will come to Missoula this concert season as finalists for the next Mizzou- music director. Two women and three men are vying to lead the Missoula Symphony and Chorale in the next decade. Each finalist has selected a unique program showcasing their talents and distinct styles. It's a concert you don't want to miss, and this is basically uh, kind of like a a large interview. It's a concert slash interview for the new position as director of the Missoula Symphony. You don't want to miss it. It's happening tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. at the University of Montana. I believe it's going to be in the Denison Theater. All right. Whew, there's so much going on. Man, I can't, I just can't, I just can't talk. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, I guess my uh, morning drink really kicked in. All right, so if you guys are going out and about on Saturday, you got the Dead Yellers, and it's going to be some rock and country music at the Top Hat Lounge Saturday night. Uh, Union Club is going to have Russ Nassett Saturday night, and then, of course, you got some DJ music, uh, absolutely, with Chris Moon happening at the Batlander. Just a lot of things that are happening around. Um, Sunday, um, you know, it's Super Bowl. It's a, uh, yeah. <laughs> that so shows how much interest I have in the Super Bowl. Sorry, not everyone likes the Super Bowl, but uh, it's kind of interesting just kind of see this how the uh, just the overall amount of interest in the Super Bowl. But not only that, but the commercials they're showing behind the scenes of the making of these commercials, which for me as a film uh, aficionado. Uh, is really excited about. I love behind the scenes stuff. It's great. They just released the behind the scenes of Funnier Dies video of the uh, the um, Will Ferrell and the baby. <laughs> it's it's actually pretty great. Anyways, uh, <laughs> all right. So I'm gonna wrap up the show. If you want more information about what kind of things are happening in the city of Missoula, you'd be like, hey, what's going on in Missoula? This is what it is. MissoulaEvents.net. If you're interested in finding out more about MCAT, go to MCAT.org. It'll bring you to this page, and you can get in contact with us. The number right there. Um, ooh, you can't even see it. Let's see if you can get a closer look. If you want to see it, that's a number that you can reach us by is 213-9478. You can also contact us at mcat at mcat.org. That is our email, mcat at mcat.org. All right. So without further ado, I want to thank you guys for joining me this morning. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Sky Ramp. Take care and... Um, have a great rest of your January as it will be over in 14 hours. Or if you're watching the replay, it's going to be over like in eight hours. Goodbye. (laughs) 